Hey guys, I'm on a hike today and I want to get some shots of myself. So in this video, I will show you how I do that. And the first recommendation I have here is to definitely bring a zoom lens because that gives you a few more options regarding your framing and also a gorilla pod because you can just put the gorilla pod everywhere, you can attach it to trees, etc. So that helps a lot. I got the gorilla pod 3K Pro or Plus, however it's called, because that's made out of metal. So it holds even bigger camera setups, which is not an issue today, but oftentimes I have heavier camera camera setup so then it works a bit better and at the end of the video I also have a little video editing tip for you that is very easy to implement it works with every video editor and it makes your b-roll sequence so much smoother and easier to watch so definitely stick to the end and let's go and get some shots so before you start shooting your b-roll sequence you should be aware of that you want to tell a story because you have a main character and that character does something when you film yourself so it should tell a story and that's why you should be aware of that every single clip should add something to the story of course you can always cut out some clips later you mustn't use every clip you shoot that's why it's generally a bit better to shoot a bit more than you actually need but be aware of that and the tip that i can give you here is try to give every single clip a little title like my overall sequence will be today that someone goes hiking and he's very exhausted but then he arrives at the viewpoint and he's amazed by the view and it was worth it which will be a bit complicated today because it's foggy hope that <laughs> lit's up um, it should be fine so i now start with some clips that introduce me as the main character like walking through a forest and then i will do some clips that show me how i get exhausted and maybe one time i will fall to the ground or something like that we will see what comes into my mind specifically but i try to give every single clip a title like feet of a guy walking through a forest guy walking through a forest forest with a guy walking in the background it's re really important to be specific when you give it titles because depending on how you title it it completely changes the shot like if i say viewpoint with a girl then it, it's more like that you show the wall viewpoint and somewhere there's a girl standing around there but if i say girl enjoying the view from a viewpoint then it's more that the girl is big in the shot and the viewpoint is, is more like you, you see it but it's it's not that present as much as the girl so think about that really be specific with giving every single clip a title and then you automatically make better shots okay now i'm setting up my first shot here and that's where i can also give you two other tips so the first tip is that i use foreground objects here i use these plants as foreground objects and they make the shot a bit more interesting it feels a bit more like someone's watching me walking through the forest and that's a bit of an introduction of myself. So here we'll zoom in a little bit. Actually, these, these foreground objects, these planes, they work a bit better with wide angle shots. But for now, because it's the first shot, I want to only show my feet. That's why I zoom a bit in now. And the second tip here is to set your focus right before you start shooting. Like, even if you have good autofocus, it's oftentimes not a deal to use that because the autofocus likely doesn't know what to keep in focus. So that's why I use manual focus here and I focus somewhere in between the trees where I will walk later. Okay, that was good. And now I'm setting up a second shot where I want to get even closer to my feet. So I set it up in a way here that I would step like one and a half meters or so in front of the camera and then I can like cut the shot in between and that's also something important always try to capture a few more angles like a few more close-ups a few more wider angles etc also use the zoom lens to your advantage like sometimes I can have it at 18 millimeters for a nice wide angle view and sometimes a bit more zoomed in for a close-up shot that's also important the more you vary around with these things the better it is so as mentioned I'm in autofocus and there's one feature that you should turn on your camera to make that a bit easier easier for you which is called focus peaking which basically puts some lines wherever your focus sits so you can change the color in your camera of the focus peaking which I've set to red because I can see that really good on my display so now I'm in, fo in manual focus here I can just turn the wheel and I see how the red lines move over the screen so I know exactly if the area of the frame is in, is in focus where I want to walk. So now it's time for a wide angle shot that completely reveals myself. So before we had some close up shots that make the viewer ask some questions to himself, like what's going on, why he's walking in the forest. 
and now I want to actually show the forest here and show how I walk completely so to further develop the story a bit so let's do that I'm just setting my camera up here again this time I don't make so much use of foreground objects because I want to focus on that view here in the forest it just looks amazing here in the cloud right now so there's all the fog that's awesome so let's get it So now I want to get a shot of myself. I've set the lens to the widest angle possible. 18 millimeters on an APS-C camera is a bit tight already, but it works. If you have a gorilla pod, that's also one reason to get one. You can bend it like that and then you can get a sh good shot of yourself. And also for that sh this shot, because it's a bit harder to focus now, I use autofocus. And because the focus on this camera is not the very best, even if it's good enough usually, I've set the autofocus point directly on my face. So in case it doesn't track my face, then at least via focus point, I still have my face in focus. And the reason why I want to get a shot now is that it actually looks pretty nice looking up here. So I first want to get a shot of myself looking up that I can then combine with a wide angle shot that I did before and then I will get a shot of just the trees uh, above me so that later the viewer can see what I'm seeing. So let's do that. Now for that shot I want to go to 60 frames per second because then I can slow it down later and if you have subjects that don't move like trees then it doesn't really matter if you use slow motion all the time people can't really see that. So now I can slow this clip down in post and therefore it's a bit more stable. This way I can ensure that everything looks stable and more cinematic there. So I'm walking a bit further now, but on the way I'm all the time looking for other spots where I can shoot something nice. And here's actually a spot that looks really cool, like a bit mystery with this dead tree here. And I don't necessarily want to get a shot of myself here, but here I also want to get a nice B-roll shot of just the tree. Yeah, just if you see something interesting, always get those shots because that also enhances your story a bit and it gives the viewer kind of an impression of the surrounding area, area wherever you are. And for this I put the gorilla pod off because that's a bit distracting when I do camera movement, so don't do that. That's also good because then you can move your camera and that makes the shot look a bit more dynamic. So having the shots in between definitely helps to make your video great. And don't, don't forget the gorilla pot, of course. <laughs> so here I found another great spot with this lying tree that it looks so epic. But for this shot, I definitely want to have, have myself in front of the tree. So I will walk into the shot here and I've set the camera up exactly as before, but just in a way that I use 18 millimeters. So I capture a wide angle shot and not a close up shot as we did with the first introduction. But the rest, as you see, is exactly the same. Just put the camera on the ground and frame your shot right. So in that case, I want to have the tree in the middle and I want to stand also in the middle as well, but the tree like above me. So I framed the shot already and kind of imagined where I want to stand later in the shot. And yeah, then the rest that you do is just press the record button and walk into the shot. Also, I used manual focus here so that there are no bad surprises when I see it in the edit later. Okay, as you can see this tree, it really looks a bit like in a horror movie or so, like that's so epic. I like that and that's, that's where I also get another shot of that where I'm not in the frame. So that first you have the shot where I'm in the frame and then you see what I see. So now it gets rough, now I can start telling the actual story that I wanted to tell, like how I get exhausted through the hike and then I finally arrive at the viewpoint. So here's the tree lying around where I have to climb a bit and that's a good transition to get to a rough part of the video. So we first had a like easy hike where I could kind of enjoy the view, but now I will climb through that tree and that's where it starts getting rougher. So I've also set my camera up here pretty low got the framing right so that I, I want to have it low because that makes everything look a bit bigger like both myself but also the tree and I think that does a pretty good job here so let's get some climbing shots. The problem is that you always have to climb back get your camera and then climb again. Uh, I don't want to know how many ways Casey Neistat passed two times in his life. <laughs> 
So to dramatize that even further, I now took a place here where we have a lot of plants in the foreground so that you can barely see anything. And this is actually right after the tree that I just climbed. So I will also do a walking shot like of me walking away from the tree. And because of all these plants in the foreground, that it makes it look even rougher. I will probably add a bit of handshake effect, etc. later in post so that I can sell the story a bit more. Now while I was climbing through here again, I actually recognized that these branches here look pretty cool and I have to grab them. And that's like a good B-roll shot of yourself to enhance what you're doing a bit. So here I will just only film how I grab it because that gives you a bit of the feeling of how to be connected to the nature. So let's do that here as well. For the autofocus. Okay, I think that's a good one. And if you get shots like that, it's totally fine if you have a bit of shake in there. If you want to have a video like that, where I want to deliver a pretty rough feeling to the viewer, because that then adds to the feeling. So having shake in your footage is not always bad. It depends really on the individual shot. So next part of it, we have a stair here and here I want to give a rough feeling by like first walking down the stairs, then I fall down, I slip on the stairs and you, you see my face walking up with an exhausted face. And right after that, maybe one or two more shots and we can come to the final viewpoint. I start walking a bit earlier because then I'm already at the right speed. If I would start here when walking, then I, I would like speed up here and that wouldn't really come natural in the final video. So here, I really start around here. Ah, don't fall now, really. <laughs> so Important, always review the shots after you did. Sometimes they don't come out as good as you want to. So by reviewing them, you can ensure that it's a good one. Okay, now I'm filming the fall and I go wide angle here so that I can be close to the step. I will walk over the camera and then I make the fall there. So it will be a bit difficult, I think, but let's see how it turns out. Of course, be careful when, do some, when doing something like that. It's good to do that close up because then they don't see that you actually don't fall and you catch yourself perfectly. <laughs> it comes out so good. <laughs> You cannot just see my feet, you can actually also see how I really lie there. It actually looks awesome. So what I will just do now, I will just film myself how I lie here. And I get up, so this shot will be then after the actual fall, just to show a bit of like, oh, that's painful, blah, blah, blah. So... Uh, so really filmmaking is like you never grow up. It's exactly the same as I did when I was a child, like a little skater boy and we were filming every day and improvising some stuff, very inspired by Jackass. So yeah, filmmaking makes you never grow up really. <laughs> this is actually a very good example here why the gorilla pod is so good. Like you see I could perfectly fit the form here and therefore I can position the camera easily and that wouldn't be possible with other tripods. So that's why I recommend gorilla pods. I did some more shots of the plants while we were walking here because they add a bit to this roughness with all the fog around. So now I want to take another shot of a trip here. It's just it's exactly the same, nothing special about this shot, just to enhance the story a bit more. So let's do that as well. I think that was a bit fake, so let's do that once more. that was more realistic. So now we got another close-up oh, shot of my head but while I'm walking and I'm breathing heavily so that enhan it enhances the feeling of being exhausted a bit more. I did it a bit longer so that I definitely have some part of the footage that I can use and my tip here is really to to imagine that you would really be exhausted or that whatever you want to play would really happen because then you automatically act in the right way. So now I did one shot before how I just walk here and sit on the bank so that's kind of the final shot but it's not really final. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video my original intention was to film a video of someone that gets exhausted doing a hike but then arrives at the viewpoint and he's happy and now we're at the viewpoint here and can't really enjoy a view because of the cloud we're inside. 
which is not necessarily a bad thing. So I will change the story here a little bit. I will instead just switch to Kathy. So kind of making the story a bit, oh yeah, it was a hard hike and it didn't really do what, what we wanted to do, like getting a nice view, but we can still enjoy our coffee. It's like enjoying the small things in life. And I think that's also important when you should be raw of yourself or generally you want to tell a story. You need to be a bit flexible if you do storytelling like that and you don't really have a script when you start out. Just sometimes stuff doesn't work out as expected and then you have to adjust to it. So now I will do one of my last shots here. I had to get my quick release plate off for the GoPro, oh, GoPro, Gorilla Pod. And now I'll just pl place the camera here. I want to get a close up shot here of how I put the bottle here from the coffee. That's actually great here. Yeah, I can see the bottle on the screen. I put the focus point on there and I just press the F on button once and then I'm sure it focused where the bottle will stand. So now I just press this button. I lift the bottle. I wasn't perfect. It was not perfect. That was good. Okay, and now like just some close-up shots of me opening the bottle and drinking coffee here. Good thing about a quick release plate is you can put it under your lens and that lifts the camera a little bit so that you have better framing. I purposefully smash it a bit so that it makes a strong sound and then I can use the sound later to do some sound design. I poke, poke, poke and there's the coffee. So that saves you some time when you edit your video later because you have to do less sound design. And one more wide angle as the very last hero shot. You should hear a bit of sound now, of uh, wind, because it gets quite strong. Or we don't get rain. Ah. Okay, let's come to the two editing tips. Yeah, actually two, not just one, but the first one you likely never heard about that, especially as a beginner, and that's that you should cut the second clip of a certain sequence always at a body position where the first clip ends. So let me give you an example. If I would have a walking shot here now, and the first walking shot ends in that position where I have my leg in that position, then I would start the second clip also in that position so that it feels like a solid movement. Like in the first clip, I, I do a move like that or I end the move here and in the second clip, I walk here. Even if I walk somewhere else in another place because then the motion feels fluid across two clips. So when you edit your videos, definitely make sure to, to get that right. And you likely heard about the second video editing tip and that's basically that you crop into the image and then you can animate it. That's why you should shoot in 4K as much as possible. So basically what you do is you can crop into the image at let's say 30, 130%. That's usually a good value that I use without losing too much quality. And then when you have a professional video editor like Final Cut, Adobe Premiere or DaVinci Resolve, you can use keyframes to animate that. So I would set the position of the frame in the clip on the very first frame to the complete left for example and then on the very last frame of the clip I would set it to the very right position and then it automatically animates that so you have a smooth move from the left to the right part of the frame and that's great because it makes your shots look a bit more dynamic and some of you guys must ask yourself when to add slow motion for your b-roll footage if you film yourself i would suggest to only add slow motion at clips where they are like key shots where you really want to emphasize the moment or whatever happens but if you add slow motion in every clip it just is a bit too much and doesn't really look solid anymore so you can generally film your clips in 60 frames per second and then publish the video in 24 and only slow some of the clips down that you really want to emphasize. Be careful, Robbie, you nearly fall. <laughs> <laughs> So I hope you enjoyed this video and it was helpful. If yes, then please leave me a thumbs up. And also, if you want to see more filmmaking tutorials like that, don't forget to hit, a, hit the subscribe and the bell notifications button for upcoming videos. I hope to see you in the next one. Okay. <laughs>